Hey guys, welcome to my channel 365 RGCSE where we're going to be going over a short story provided by the Cambridge in the syllabus The Widow's Might by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So let's move on to the table of contents. We're going to be taking a look at the life of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. We're going to be taking a look at the summary and plot of the story along with the themes as well as the stylistic devices used within the, within the story. So, our first objective is about the life of Charlotte and a glance at her career and personal life. So, who was Charlotte Perkins Gilman? She is an American writer born on July 3rd, 1860 in Hartford, Connecticut. Her best known story is The Yellow Wallpaper and her greatest work of non-fiction is Women and Economics. Now, she is a feminist writer, which might trigger some of you, but doesn't matter this is part of the syllabus so we're going to have to study it anyways so basically um she uh, along with writing books she established a magazine the forerunner which was published from 1909 to 1916 as prolific a writer as she was she did commit suicide on august 17th 1935 in pasadena california when she learned that she had inoperable breast cancer just don't commit suicide like her guys Oh, yeah. Now we're going to go on to her early life. So Gilman uh, was born on July 3rd, as I said earlier. She's a writer. She was a social activist. She had a difficult childhood in general. This is why her writing is obviously quite powerful. Her father, Frederick Beecher Perkins, was a relative of well-known and influential Beecher family, including the writer Harriet Beecher Stowe. But he abandoned the family, which is why you have a lot of feminist writings from her, leaving Charlotte's mother to raise two children on her own. D due to this, Gilman had to move around a lot, and that's why her education was affected greatly, to be fair. Now we're going to move on to her marriage in inspiration. So she did marry artist Charles Stetson in 1884. They had a daughter named Catherine, and during her long, decade-long marriage with Stetson, she, uh, Gilman experienced severe depression and underwent a series of unusual treatments for it. This experience she had is known to have inspired her uh, for the best known short story, The Yellow Wallpaper. After that, uh, after like a decade long marriage, she, de she decided to divorce Stetson and went on to marry her cousin George. And then she stayed with George until his death. Then... After his death, she did go to a doctor because she was facing some problems. Then she learned that she had inoperable breast cancer. And as I said earlier, she did commit suicide. So that's all you need to know about Charlotte's life. Nothing much. We just need to know that uh, her life is what is the reason as to why the widow's might is such um, a feminist story. So now we're going to take a look at the summary plot themes and setting of the widow's might. So, in quite a few words, the summary is basically as follows. In the widow's might, a woman, instead of giving the deceased husband's money to her children, decides she has always lived for others and now will live for herself and travel all over the world. Now, this story is set in Denver, Colorado, USA, 1911. Now, remember, this story has been inspired from her experiences when she was a child. If you remember correctly... Her mother was struggling a lot. And because her mother was struggling a lot, because of the fact that the, uh, her father left her mother, so the story is basically set along some, somewhere along those lines, which is why you can see the story is very feminist and has a lot of independence for women and women's rights. Now we'll move on to the plot. So the story kicks off with the funeral of Mr. McPherson. And within this scenario, there's a discussion between the children with regards to what they should do with their mother. Now, we move on to then the arrival of the lawyer. The, the lawyer's name is Mr. Franklin. Then there's a discussion about the will. Within the will, there's basically um, uh, what uh, the division of real estate, the deeds, and the will in itself. The choices then comes a part where children discuss the choices of Mrs. McPherson, basically the woman I was talking about earlier. And in the end, they part ways. Mrs. McPherson decides to go west to New Zealand, while the others, her children, two daughters and one son, 
the son's name is James, the daughters are Ellen and Adelaide, decide to go back to their homes in the east. So the main themes in this story are independence, struggle, control, freedom, determination, and duty. What you'd expect from a feminist writer in general. Stylistic devices. Now that we have understood the summary, the setting, and the plot and themes, we're going to look at the stylistic devices and how these themes are presented in the story. So the first one is visual imagery and symbolism. The quote is, she threw off the long black veil. Now remember, whenever you analyze a stylistic device, you need to note down the denotative meaning, as in the first stuff that come to your mind, what does it mean on the surface, and the connotative meaning, what is implied. So basically, denotatively, it just describes the attire Mrs. McPherson was accustomed to wearing, what she normally wore, what she preferred wearing. Now what does this imply? Now let's look at the uh, part long black veil. You see black possibly symbolizing hardship. Basically this quote in general represents the themes of freedom and struggle. The veil is black. Okay. So it symbolizes struggle. Black is normally associated with struggle. Then the removal of this veil, veil when she threw it off. It's basically like she breaks the shackles of the um, she breaks the shackles of struggle and she attains freedom. And she kind of uh, is no longer segregated. She's, will, she's no longer going to be subject to segregation anymore. And if you look at the word long, basically it emphasizes the number of problems they must have felt. Which is why it says long black veil. The, lo the word black is problem. So a lot of problems, a lot of women's segregation was going on in that era. So we can see that this is uh, one hell of a story with a lot of morals that we can keep up to date. Now let's move on to another stylistic device. Okay, so this is a dialogue. Dialogue is basically what the, um, the character speaks. Basically, in my words. Hopefully you guys will have better words. Make sure you note down, I mean, sorry, make sure you type down in the comments what you want me to do next. If there's a story you want me to analyze or something else. And yes, this, the link for this PowerPoint will be there in the description below. Make sure you subscribe too. And turn on all post notifications before exiting the video. So that, that way you'll know whenever I upload something like this. And trust me, it'll help you a lot when it comes to assignments from your teachers. Now let's move on to this quote I was telling you. So the quote is, I didn't think to trouble you with my affairs. Within the middle of the story, this is a quote by Mrs. McPherson. Basically, it describes the considerate nature of Mrs. McPherson. Look at the wording. She doesn't decide to trouble her children, James, Ellen, and Adelaide, with her affairs, with her troubles. This means that Mrs. McPherson is quite considerate, keeps everything to herself, and kind of describes who it is. So basically, instead of using dialogue as the literary device, you could even use characterization because it helps you understand more about the character. Now let's move on to what it implies. Basically, it implies the theme of struggle again. You see, the word affairs creates some sort of uh, mysterious and ambiguous atmosphere. Because if you look at the context in which it is used, it sounds as though Mrs. McPherson was forced to do something that she wouldn't have done. And she only does this because she feels a sense of duty to her husband. If you read the story carefully, you will come to know that there is a, a part in which she, she is responsible for the Rancho Sanctorium. This is basically, she manages her husband, Mr. McPherson, who is now deceased, his ranch. She manages his ranch, makes money, and those were her troubles. And she wouldn't have normally done that, as most women wouldn't have done during that time. But she felt a sense of duty. She felt that she owed Mr. McPherson for keeping her. So as you can, uh, uh, now you can kind of get a picture of what women's life was back in the era. And... This is basically inspired from when her father left her mother. I'm talking about Charlotte right now. So this now you can see where this is coming from. You can see the emotion from the story. And well, I hope you guys can use this in your analysis when you're writing it in the exam. Or hopefully impress your teachers with this. And let's continue. Now this also represents the theme of determination. As she does these affairs by herself. Remember, I didn't think to trouble you with my affairs. She's puts emphasis on the word my affairs. That's because she is determined to do everything on her own without the help of external factors. She doesn't want to disturb her children. She feels that they have done her done their duty and I have done my duty. We are no long we don't we no longer owe each other. 
and as such she doesn't want to disturb anyone and does everything by herself. Now let's move on to another stylistic device. Point of view. It's ba this is the uh, phrase that's basically at the end of the um, story. Three going east, one going west, as in one west. So the denotative meaning is this phrase brings in the narrator to add another perspective to this story. You see, when you add another perspective in the story, it brings, um, uh, how do you put this? It kind of brings more emotion. It kind of brings a new sense of understanding the story. It brings a new uh, way of seeing how things are going. So if you can see, the narrator kind of points out three going east, one west. And we can see that Mrs. McPherson is now decided to become a loner. This takes place after a discussion between her and her children over um, whether she should live with them. or And then she specifically states that she wants to live her life alone. She states that she has built up enough of enough money. She has saved. She has enough money to get her back from whenever she gets lost. She doesn't need the assistance of her children. So this kind of brings to us the theme of independence. It creates an effect of determination around the reader. It makes the reader feel that, okay, I can do this on my own. I, ne I need not someone else's help. I can do this on my own. This is basically what um, uh, uh, the story is about. And this is a uh, feminist ideology that women can do things, the things they wish on their own without the need for permission from men, without the need of control from men. So Mrs. McPherson is basically an, an embodiment of what is called women empowerment in today's, not in today's terms. Historically, women were thought to be inferior. I'm sure we all know this. But this story suggests that women should ignore these claims. And not only should they ignore that, but they should live their life to the fullest. They should pursue their dreams as they also are human beings. Mrs. McPherson gave up what society thought women's duties were and went on to live her life. Remember, women's duties were basically associated with family and cooking. Mrs. McPherson said, nope, those are not going to be my duties. They're everyone's duties. You have to preach equality among everyone. And that's another theme. So, and she went on to live her life, just as many men would. Let's move on to my fourth device that I found. I have handpicked these devices. I'm pretty sure more of you can kind of get, I mean, I mean, like you guys can identify way more than I can. If you do, make tell me down in the comments below and I'll make an updated version of this video. So now another device that I found are a paradigm shift and a dialogue. Now the two quotes of which I can use to explain paradigm shift, I have done my duty since the day I married him and I'm going to live. Before anything, we need to understand what is a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is basically a fundamental change of ideas in the story. So look at the first quote. I have done my duty since the day I married him. So this is basically talking about duty. Okay. But then now she moved she, later on the story. I'm going to live. She forgoes duty. She forgets her uh, previous morals and replaces them with what is more modern. So in this case, we can kind of see a contrast between the themes of duty and independence. As um, plain as the story is, it contains a lot of moral values that we can still use to this day. So basically, the theme of duty in this story refers to women placing men above themselves, a society norm back in the day. So society. We can see this in the first half of the story. She basically describes what she did, why she did it, and basically she did it for her husband. She didn't put her needs above him, and so on. But... As you approach the second part of the story, we see a strong change in attitude from her. She decides to no longer follow the society norms and says, Now that Mrs. Mr. McPherson is dead, I have no duty to anyone. She feels that she needs to live her life independently. Uh, yeah, I apologize for the typo there. Liver is live, okay? Ignore me, I'm a human too. So the effect of this shift, this paradigm shift, is basically... um motivation for the reader as this shift tells us that we must live our life how we sit see fit and not how others see it we must live life how we enjoy it so this is sort of a motivational story for women for those of you lacking motivation i strongly suggest and recommend that you watch this uh watch the movie if you don't have time or what do i say maybe um read the story if you have stories of ourselves because this story is just not there as a pdf online Thank you for watching guys and uh, please share this as well to as many people as you can see so that everyone benefits from this video.
If you really enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss when I upload something like this ever again because I'm going to be covering the syllabus. So do it. It's going to help you in the long term. Adios, guys.